myth that they are actually um, invincible. Like, what do you think? So, like, say say the Houthis and um, the uh, Hezbollah and Hamas launch a, well, I guess we won't call it a guerrilla war, but they launch a ground invasion against Israel. Um, and I say guerrilla war like urban warfare, like they're fighting in the streets. You think that Israel would just be able to squash that and, and move on very quickly? I don't know if it'd be very quickly, but I think I think Israel would crush them. That would be my understanding. Um, what is what is the um, I don't know what Houthi and um, Hezbollah have in terms of air power. Do they have like air air forces or um, fighting aircraft or trained pilots uh, that are considered capable pilots in Hezbollah in Jordan? I'm not sure. I don't know. Good question. Uh, Hezbollah armed strength. Control F, Air Force. I don't think, I don't even know if Hezbollah has an Air Force. So, um, also, I don't know the Houthis in Yemen. Is Yemen still in a civil war? Is that country even like stable? How, like, what is the Houthi fighting force in Yemen? The Houthis are uh, militia. Um, they're not the government, but yeah, the country's in. Uh, so, do the not Houthis great, have it? So, they probably don't have any aircraft, state. right? And what is Yemen going to be traveling through uh, through Saudi Arabia to fight with Israel? <laughs> Is that? Do you think is Saudi Arabia? Oh, right be- now they're just, right now they're just launching rockets. But um, yeah, I mean it, that's why I say guerrilla warfare because I, if they did do it, they would wage a, a sort of um, asymmetrical urban warfare against the Israelis, which is something that the Israelis have never faced. They've won a lot of short wars that with the overwhelming power that's been handed to them by the British and, Hold and on. the United Overwhelming States. power was never but handed never to Israel. Fought. Wait, real quick. Overwhelming power was never handed overwhelming to Israel. Overwhelming power at the time. But if they... Wait, not even at the time. Arab Wait, at what time? When was... ...wage an asymmetrical uh-huh. um, sort of guerrilla war against Israel, I think it's very likely that Israel loses. Wait, when did you think overwhelming power was handed to Israel? I just mean the the U.S. and and British funding of Israel that, when was that the allowed US... them to have much more powerful weapons than the Palestinians. When was the U.S. and Britain funding Israel that allowed them to have much more powerful weapons than the Arab world? Oh, you should look up the what's it called? Hold on, I have it here in my notes. Look up the something concrete the the cement incident. Um, so Israel or. Uh, Britain was uh, shipping, um, or and maybe this, maybe it was actually Belgium, but European countries were um, funding um, Zionist settlers, and uh, they got caught shipping weapons into Israel to arm up the the Zionist settlers in the 40s, I believe, because there was a um, what they thought was a, a cement package, and it burst open, and a bunch of guns and ammunition found out, and they they found out that they were arming Hold up on. these. Wait, 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 the, wait, wait, the wait. Europeans were arming yeah. up these Israeli mm-hmm. paramilitaries, and then in the 60s. Wait, 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 wait. And, one, one, thing, wait, wait one thing at a time. One thing the, at a time. One the, thing at a time. One thing at a time. The cement incident, okay, was not Britain giving them weapons. Those weapons were smuggled into. Um, where did they come? Didn't they come from Belgium? Maybe I misunderstood it. Yeah, but they were smuggled. Right, so they were smuggling arms into Israel, which is what gave them uh, greater military power and greater weaponry than, than yeah, the Yeah, but Arabs. they were buying them. They weren't being supported by the British. The British were getting ass mad that the Israelis were doing this. The, the, for the first, for the whole first war, uh, Israel was covertly smuggling uh, arms from Czechoslovakia as well. But it wasn't because the British were supporting them. The British hated that. The Jews were buying these and smuggling them themselves. They weren't getting support from British to do this. Okay. I, so I don't know. We have this idea that Israel only exists because Britain or the U.S. was supporting them. That's not true through any of their early major wars. It was it was just Israel supporting itself, and then uh, Jews from around I mean, the world the would donate to it. I mean, the British did train the the Haganah on how to attack Arab villages, and. They were the ones who funded, supported, and facilitated the original uh, Zionist commission. I should look up what the actual name of it was. Um, but they were the ones who originally funded and, and propped up the, um, the Zionist expansion into Israel in, in 1919 was, I believe, when that started. So it was tacitly supported by the British. And then in the 60s, when the U.S. took over, is obviously when... The U.S. military-industrial complex hold on. started. The British. Arming hold on. Wait, Israel wait. wait. First of all, wait. First of all, you're you're pivoting to a whole bunch of weak points because almost every single thing you're saying is wrong. So initially, you pivoted from this, but the British in America did not fund early Israel. Number one. Number two. The early Haganah. That the fighting force. 
okay, was not trained by the, the Brits. It was um, it was Jewish people that had come under the first or second Aliyah that had partaken in earlier wars that had been part of the British army that took part then in becoming part of the Haganah. The British army did not train the, the Haganah early on. It was just there were people that had, had immigrated after like World War One that became part of that fighting force. So the idea that the early uh, the idea that the early mili uh, militaries or that the early Israel was um, being supported that doesn't even make sense. The, the Soviet Union was massively supporting the Arab nations. Um, Britain's support was generally thrown behind King Abdullah in forty eight uh, after the the. the War of Independence. So the idea that Israel was getting all the support, I'm pretty sure the Arab nations were getting more support from other countries officially than Israel was, at least up through 67. If you, in Ilan Pape's book, do you know who he is? He's a, I am familiar um, with him, yes. Israeli scholar, yes. He does talk about the Haganah being secretly trained up by the British. Um, so we can look into that, um, that source if you want. But either way, um, the, regardless of how much funding and support they were getting from the British uh, when the, the Zionists were calling or when the, the settlers were moving into the the British mandate in Palestine, which did, you know, eventually became a disaster for the British where they were like, just get us out of here. We don't want to deal with this anymore. Um, yes. It doesn't change the point. Yes. I don't even care. That is fucking 85. Let's go. <sighs> Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, let's go.